Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to The Game Changer. I'm Anita, the president of Miasa and your host for today's chat session. And today, as always, we are spotlighting individuals that have created a lot of change and impact in the community and extraordinary in their own ways. Alhamdulillah, today joining us in our studio, we have with us Ustaz Muhammad No Durus, our Vice President 2 of Miasa and also Aris Ramli or Caprice ataupun mungkin Daddy Cap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you so much to the both of you okay. for being here today. And for today's discussion, we will be talking about transforming communities for inclusion. Sometimes the cries for help are silent, the path to healing and transformation. And before we dive into our topic, let me first maybe give you a little bit of introduction of our two panelists. Uh, Ustaz Muhammad No Duros is a graduate from the Faculty of Theology at Al Azhar University with a specialization in creed, beliefs, and philosophy, and he has been with N Naim Mosque. Betul Yes, yes. Okay, N Naim Mosque of Singapore as an Islamic Thinkers Department executive, the sub editor of the only English uh, monthly magazine in Singapore previously, and also assuming the role of head of Dakwah of Hijra Consultancy Services. And he first joined us uh, with Koisir Dar Salam, I think in 2014. Yeah. And also, um, he then joined Miasa in 2017. And Ustaz Muhammad Noor loves to be immersed in the world of ideas. Therefore, reading, discussing, and swimming is very close to his heart. But we will learn more about that today. Thank you so much, Ustaz, for joining us. And of course, uh, welcome, Caprice. Uh, I think Caprice, we all know who he is. Uh, but just maybe a little bit, he has multiple roles such as influencer, singer, songwriter, record producer, entrepreneur and also a motivational speaker. And of course, you're also very active in social media um, as, and especially posting your commentary videos mm -hmm. on viral issues with the theme of what is on the news today. And up to date, you've garnered about 1.4 million followers on Instagram and apart from that, Caprice is uh, enthusiastic in promoting Islamic learning and education to help young Muslims uh, and people worldwide. And some of your past initiatives, you've got classroom.com, mm -hmm. mengaji.com, rajin.com, as we can see. Um, he's now into farming. Maybe he'll share with us a little bit on that as well. Okay, so let's get right into it. And maybe Ustaz, first question to you. So we all know... <coughs> When I say Ustaz, you're obviously an Ustaz, <coughs> spiritual healer and also the Vice President too of Miasa. Maybe can you tell us Ustaz a little bit about yourself um, other than being an Ustaz? Because even for me personally, it's very difficult to see you beyond that Ustaz role. Other than an Ustaz kan sebenarnya. Um, and I think <laughs> for a lot of people as well, bila kita nampak religious leaders, you know, Islamic scholars, uh, maybe Ustaz, what are some things that people might not know about you? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, uh, Thank Paulita, you. for this invitation. Thank you for being here, yeah, Caprice. Um, for those who are familiar with my works, my talks and my speeches, my presentations, that's all about it. I'm not an interesting person. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> beyond that. Uh, maybe I have some uh, uh, interest that people may not know. Like, okay. for example, like most men like soccer. Soccer, right? okay. But from time to time, I, I watch it and I follow, mm -hmm. you know, the developments, especially the recent World Cup, okay. which is, uh, I think, the best World Cup mm -hmm. ever. And uh, my best player so far is uh, Dennis Bukem. Okay. Yeah. Oh. You know, Dennis Bukem. Classic, yeah. yeah. Ah, the mm -hmm. Iceman, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, beyond that, I, 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 like, uh, I like classical songs. I, okay. mm, I like to sing. For myself, <laughs> okay. okay, and not nothing beyond that, okay. and uh, that's about it. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. I like swimming too sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. So when you're helming, um, yeah. you know, the role of an ustaz mm -hmm. or as a spiritual leader, anything within the faith, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. religion, um, or like the you know arena, and when something you do something negative, it portrays negatively on you, but it tarnishes mm -hmm. the whole okay. image, ustaz. So is it heavy carrying that? Um, you know that role because I think that a lot of times we forget. You know, ustaz are human beings too. Yeah. We all make mistakes. So maybe uh, some comments. On yeah. That. <coughs> you know that statement that ustaz, uh, human beings too. Mm. If it is being repeated uh, too yeah. often, right. people may lower down the bar of standard being mm. an ustaz. Mm -hmm. You see, we are not angels. Right. Ustazas so are not angels. Right. But our responsibility is to set up a higher bar Betul. of standard of being a human being right. not to the level of angels of course mm. 
so when we hear such uh, sad and unfortunate uh, cases taking place in this country uh, it just challenges us to be better no i look at it uh, that way of course there are some cleaning up to do yes right constant cleaning up to do but in any to, area yes, in any area. Yep. but i think it's good as a motivation for us to always muhasaba yes. you know because we always teach people about muhasaba but it's not something easy to do Betul. muhasaba and muraqaba which is yeah. more important muhasaba which is uh-huh. to observe your inward realities your inward uh, thoughts and activities right. instead of only your actions and behaviors right. uh, so this are Uh, this is why it leads to alhamdulillah alhamdulillah thank you thank mm. you so much so i think that's really true because even you know i think as you know coming from even an ordinary school not necessarily an islamic school we all have high regards of our yeah. islamic teachers yeah. and i personally learned a lot from my own islamic teacher ustaza you know in public schools mm. our ustaza primary school that's the only ustaza for the mm. whole of six years and then you go to secondary school and that same ustaza teaches you for the following five years can mm-hmm. so thank you thank you ustaz for that Um, Caprice, so just as a mm. opening question for sure. you, we all know Caprice. Malaysia knows Caprice. Sure. <laughs> Who is Iris Ramli? More, more is the same person, <laughs> right? More right. is the same person, but maybe Iris Ramli is more uh, relaxed, subdued. Right. Um, I'm, I'm quite a private person. Um, if you ask my wife, I, I enjoy reading a lot of books. I mm-hmm. play games. Um, I, I don't go socialize a lot. Um, so that's like the Iris Ramli. I, I love to read, I love to work, uh, play games, read books, relaxed person, but the Caprice character is obviously very outgoing, outspoken, right. um, too loud sometimes, <laughs> you know, but um, I, I enjoy, I enjoy like growing in this industry from music okay. into IT, and then, you know, I just started making videos about current issues, yep. just my own opinion, mm-hmm. um, and for some reason, people enjoy watching it, you know what I right. mean? And so that's um, that's the two ro- two roles I play in a way. Yeah. Um, trying to balance a private life with a family now and a kid, mm-hmm. and then trying as well um, cater to my audience to not you know disappoint them in some right. sense. Yeah. What which role do you find more meaningful and rewarding to you though? Well, honestly, uh, the caprice role is is a burden, uh, a but burden. more meaningful only because when you when you have followers, right, you are the tangguh jawab. Which is too high Betul. that you you cannot lead two people astray, mm-hmm. get them closer to a, a better path, right. uh, th- and that burden is on your shoulders 100%. Right. I mean, you took this role, um, but it's meaningful because in the event that you do help people uh, become better or open up their eyes to something a lot bigger than uh, dunia, right. then it gives you a sense of you know accomplishment. Like okay, that's beyond life, beyond money, be- beyond cars, beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, fame changing lives might be more important right. so um, whenever we make that sort of impact big or small it's something that helps me sleep at night you know me being one with anxiety and <laughs> depression right so when you f- when you're able to maybe not help yourself but you help someone else mm. it makes you feel a lot better i can right. sleep better at night if right. i know that this person's life has improved uh 10%. Mm-hmm. Technically that's like that becomes my replacement of my Xanax, you right. know what I mean? Right. It's weird, but um yeah, I I, I tend to be more I, f- I feel more accomplished being Caprice. Iris Romney is really boring person. No really, if you ask my wife, it's quite boring. Right. <laughs> Read books and a chill person, yeah. yeah. But I believe keeping your private life private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I think it's also a privilege um, even for me being able to do this work so with that platform obviously it comes sure. responsibility and like Ustaz as well mm. there's accountability mm. in the mm. roles that we helm. Mm. So thank you um Caprice for that. Ustaz maybe um let them bit more go into the the topic of discussion uh, when we talk about faith and uh, religion you know some people can be quite critical and Uh, judgmental on those who are struggling with you know mental health issues um, addiction uh, these types of condition um, why do you think this continues to happen and how do you suggest uh, we move forward um, in this uh, when was the last time uh, we hear our teachers in the mosque okay. our ustaz, our ustaz uh, speak about the role of the brain in regulating emotions mm-hmm. or our psychological state No, we always connect it to the soul, right. and as if that's the only thing that we have. That's a very narrow understanding of a human being. Right. So when this is being uh, spread in the society, like you know, we are just the soul. If mm-hmm. you have depression, if you have anxiety, therefore your iman is low. Yeah. Confirm. There's no other reason. Mm-hmm. 
of course this leads to people being judgmental yeah. Yeah, because we want to have a high iman and trusting the religion uh, if you're Muslim trusting your religion of Islam mm -hmm. so I would call the society to relook really at our intellectual tradition that we have people like Abu Zayd al balqi we have people like uh, Al-Ghazali we have people like even Ibn Sina if people want to uh, include him uh, mm -hmm. under the umbrella of Islamic scholarship we have spoken much about the human brain right. we have not neglected the human brain but now it is being neglected in Islamic discourses but Alhamdulillah I have seen a revival, uh, especially you see in the UK, uh, in, in Cambridge, uh, mm -hmm. and also we have uh, students of Professor Malik Badri in Malaysia yes. who are speaking about this uh, revival of uh, looking at men with this holistic view again, mm -hmm. like having the uh, spiritual dimension, physical dimension, social dimension, and biological dimension. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this fragmented view of uh, human beings this is partly uh, the problem mm -hmm. and I, I don't think it is only the problem of uh, uh, Muslims or religious people when you look at the West it's the other way around right it uh, can sometimes be very cold and rigidly secular Betul. like uh, religion is seen as uh, not just not helpful but mm -hmm. can be a nuisance yeah. you know to uh, some people's perspective mm -hmm. uh, so we need to meet somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. the Muslims need to you know look back at your what you have and also learn from what the West have, uh, you know, achieved mm. for the past 100, 200 years. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important point, Ganus. Mm. That's about. I I do get offended when sometimes all these things, you know, mm. start uh, propping up, and you know, how do we stop stigma as an example and these perceptions in being a tragic tragic endemic as an example? Yeah. Because is it. A stigma has been around mm. you know, for such a long time mm. and when we you know bring it back to the medical paradigm to spirituality and um, religion we reduce a mental health condition to biology you know we disconnect everything when it's actually like Ustaz like what you're saying right it's one whole it's all connected um, and you know our social emotional lives so there's actually a lot of things that needs to happen then only a uh, mental health condition you know uh, can happen so it's not just about taking that medication but mm. you know uh, spirituality even for me Ustaz and I think uh, you as well Caprice you know religion was a big or key component to my recovery process and to a lot of people that are struggling out there you know we've heard thousands of stories can Ustaz yep. uh, where religion even though they're not able to you know necessarily manage you know their symptoms but they're able to hold it together even battling you know, suicidal thoughts and tendencies, religion is, and spirituality is what holds a person together. And yeah. I think this is such an important conversation. Mm -hmm. And Ustaz, sure. if we can have, you know, more of our um, Asatiza, you know, Ustaz Ustaz and, and um, all the people in, in this field to be more equipped um, to also have that, you know, mindset where there is a possibility that we don't know everything as yes. well. And Ustaz, I think this is really important because realizing and acknowledging that we don't know is also part of knowledge can, can i can i just uh, one bullet. small point uh, see for people who are struggling to mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. you know i don't understand people with mental illness you know they just go and pray and read quran but and that's it you know mm -hmm. simple question the first day of ramadan mm -hmm. for men especially mm -hmm. do you realize that your mood changes mm -hmm. it's not it's more difficult to but regulate your mood why mm -hmm. because your body uh, needs you know yep. food in that sense but doesn't mean your iman went down the first day of Ramadan. <laughs> you see, but you know that you can't, you, you're more impatient, a little bit mm -hmm. more impatient, mm -hmm. uh, tak setenang hari-hari biasa. You see? And it takes time yes. to regulate all that. So mm -hmm. times that mm -hmm. by maybe 10 times or 20 times, mm -hmm. maybe you can have some idea mm -hmm. of what people with anxiety and depression are going through. Yes. This is just to mendekatkan mm -hmm. fahaman, eh? not, not literally. Lah. <laughs> betul, okay. betul. Sure. Thank you, thank you, Ustaz. Uh, Caprice, maybe um, just a little bit, I know that you know, just following you, I mean, I do follow you as well, that a lot of your target audience, or maybe naturally that was what happened where many of them are youth. Correct. Um, what do you think are the reasons behind this? Because we mm. obviously, you know, even with the work that Miasa does, we're trying to target more youth, mm. you know, so that we can do more of this work. We want people to be talking about this, normalizing this discussion, advocating for this cause. Sure. So what do you think are maybe some strategies that you can also share mm. with those, uh, those that are watching that maybe we can leverage more on social media? Because when we talk about health, we don't necessarily leverage you know, a lot on social media, but maybe you know, influences mm. like mm. you could probably you know, help us out on this as well. 
Well, alhamdulillah, I think one of, one of the things that not mm. benefited my journey was I started from music. I was okay. 16, 17. Yeah. Um, I went straight to the haram place, performing at clubs. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But it was an experience, meaning right. we can't deny the fact that a lot of our young Muslim men and women do go to clubs, right? Uh, mm -hmm. for, 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 for whatever reasons, right? Mm -hmm. So I had that market of youth right away off the bat followed me for music. But then when I transitioned into IT, uh, apps, uh, technology, um, more youth started following me because mm -hmm. we did uh, online learning. But then when I started doing Mangaji.com, mm -hmm. that's when the not say paradox happened. But people were like, this guy perform at clubs. Mm -hmm. He raps about Chicago. Suddenly he launched an app called Mangaji.com. Mangaji but what's great about social media is mm -hmm. that uh, no matter what, the messaging or whatever you're trying to promote gets out quickly. It does. Um, and that's why I always tell people, you know, don't, don't underestimate social media. And plus, things are always changing. Mm -hmm. Like the algorithm of YouTube 10 years ago was different. Right. right? The algorithm of Instagram just two years ago was diff exactly. different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But now everything is going towards like, now you have a new, uh, a new trend, which is TikTok. Mm -hmm. So everything is changing towards TikTok. Like even okay. Instagram. Even today I'm learning how, how like the algorithm of, of Instagram is mm -hmm. geared towards TikTok. And then TikTok is very quick, fast paced. Right. Before like a one minute video makes sense. Mm -hmm. But now it has to be 30 seconds. Mm. So you have to make your point across in 30 seconds yep. before what is on the news today was a minute long mm -hmm. but if you really want the views it has to be 45 seconds and below mm -hmm. literally right. or else you won't not you will not get that kind of views and just four years ago mm -hmm. my news was about a minute yeah. a minute long and strong views right. but now if it's a minute long it probably like reduce a bit mm. um but i would tell anyone you have to get on the bandwagon unfortunately it's like it sounds weird yeah it, it could trend yeah, it could try. But that's the truth. You know, mm -hmm. if you want if you want your messaging to be out there mm -hmm. to more people, kalata could trend, then you're just going to preach to the choir maybe mm. or that small audience that you have. Mm. So, um, for better or for worse, we have to sort of echo the trend and adapt to what we believe in yeah. and uh, inshallah. But what would you say to that ustaz? We joined the bandwagon mm -hmm. to direct them back to okay. Fitra. Mm. Mm. Right, mm. Yep. but we have to go there. Yep. Hundred percent. I mean, a, fire, a firefighter mm. goes into the forest that's mm -hmm. burning, mm -hmm. not hang out at the mm -hmm. HQ. Mm -hmm. Right, you have to mm -hmm. go inside the f fire, or the forest fire, mm -hmm. and doze out the fire. If you mm -hmm. just stand back and lay by at the at the office and like, oh, that's fire over there, and you just mm -hmm. look at it, mm -hmm. you're not gonna make a difference. Yeah. But sometimes you have to put yourself in a position of. Let me jump in a crowd of fire and see what I can do to assist or yep. to make things better, yeah. inshallah. Yeah. Like it's, inshallah. A, it's a challenge to get people to view such mm -hmm. programs, right? Mm -hmm. Right, of course. A uh, one-hour program, but Definitely. we need the 30 seconds mm -hmm. to channel people here. <laughs> you, yes. need right. strong, yeah. you need like a yes. crazy yeah. headline. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. pull a headline, <laughs> you know, Caprice, Chaka, Ustad, you know, and then yeah. you're going to get the clicks. Right. If you're going to be like, um, Islam is a way of life, <laughs> even though it's a reality, mm -hmm. but you you may not get that click where people want to know. Oh, where's the controversy? Right. Where's the controversy? But that's the thing, right? Because yeah. we're trying to minimize that controversial, you know, kind of mm. and sensationing, mm. sensationalizing headlines. Mm. Um, but do you notice even the mainstream mm -hmm. media mm -hmm. are, are becoming more tabloid? Mm, yeah, exactly. That's like what, yeah. Yeah. your your mainstream media from mm. your your Al Jazeera to BBC to CNN right. to even your local right. media. Right. Before you would assume tabloids only pull off the stunt of ridiculous headlines. Right. But now even you, if you look at mainstream media, mm -hmm. they're doing it as well. Right. So it, not, not to say we should do it too, but literally we should do it too yeah. if you want those clicks. But that's why you know, there's so, so many negative comments at the moment yeah. when such you know, news comes out. It's, it's not so much negative comments. It's like um, you, give, you give free reign to human beings right. to, to express mm -hmm. 90% is going to be negative. It's like people with right. inner inner anger. Mm -hmm. It becomes their outlet. Right. And this is we're all human beings, right? right. Everyone has inner anger, mm -hmm. inner frustration, inner donkey, and it just comes out. Mm -hmm. For me, like social media is an outlet of people's other side. Like you know, you open Facebook, you see all the kachaman comments. Like I'm used to it, right? <laughs> but sometimes just for fun, I like to explore. The, the psyche of my haters. Mm -hmm. You open the Facebook pages, like, wow, they got wife and kids. Wow, this, this, this is like, like a legit 
proper Malay, right. Right. Islamic family, right. and the words they use on Facebook right. is, you will be blown away. I, I know I, I, I'm, I'm on the receiving end of a lot, so I, I like to, I used, I like to enjoy and look at the audience. But that's the thing, though. Yeah. Again, um, Ustaz, people are no longer ashamed. You know, you don't even use fake accounts. You know, you put, <laughs> you know, you, you're Anita, and you're basically providing all this, you know, hate comments or negative mm -hmm. comments and, and mm -hmm. all that. I mean, what are your thoughts on this, Ustaz? I mean, uh, we have to start with something that they are familiar with, mm -hmm. and then we can inject what mm. positive points that we want to share, yeah. like uh, what Capri say. This is a dilemma, you know. Like we have to, mm -hmm. even though you ask me personally, mm -hmm. like I hate mm -hmm. this thirty seconds and one minute uh, content, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are misleading. Uh, many of them create impressions or create thing, uh, impressions in people's minds. Yeah. That's what we have to be careful with. Mm -hmm. Now we may set a boundary. Like, this is you know, I will not langgar the haram line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will make a clickbait, for example, right. that has no fitna, no maki hamo, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that we have to consider. Yeah. What it triggers in yeah. the society's mind. Mm -hmm. We have to understand the society. Mm -hmm. If we know that it will trigger something negative in their mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, ini akan buat dia orang sangka buruk. Ini mm -hmm. akan buat dia orang menyangka sekian sekian. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have to also be responsible of that. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. we will get the views, we will mm -hmm. get the clicks, mm -hmm. but they plan something, mm -hmm. even though indirectly from the yeah. from the. Mm, tu kita mm. kena consider lah. Uh, yeah. Because I'm in the I social media juga, tapi tak ramai macam kita please lah. I was, I was <laughs> just thinking maybe if there's a way for you mm. know all these different platforms to mm. provide an algorithm some way to maybe create that boundary because I know that even for Instagram and uh, Facebook recently um, and Pinterest actually they've changed their algorithm where it's safer now so ex as an example for Instagram by default if you're 16 and below it defaults it to a private account as an example mm -hmm. so all these things and then kalau you you know Google or type in words like suicide and all these you know um, really dangerous words and then um, that safety measures come out comes out so you know all these uh, types of algorithms so anyway Ustaz, um, I just wanted to ask you really quick you know what do you think when we talk about you know these um, faith leaders and teachers how do they better equip themselves and if they want to learn more about like you said you know about the brain um, about mental health as an example where can they go to you know what kind of resources um, are available out there but before you answer that uh, we need to go for a short break and we will be right back only on the game changer hi there if you're watching this, you probably care about change. And one of the ways to make the biggest changes is to take care of our mental health. If you want to save space to share and grow with others, consider our circle time and peer support. If you want to express your emotions with your creative side, why not try out our expressive dance, speech and drama, or even art classes? If you need help figuring things out, processing your emotions, or support with your mental health challenges, our counselors, clinical psychologists, and spiritual therapists are here. If you want a snapshot of your mental health, come in for a mental health screening and assessment. At Miasa, we care for you and we want to be there for you. If you're having trouble figuring out where to begin, contact us and we'll help you get started. Because you matter. So back on The Game Changer in conversation with Ustaz Muhammad Noor Darus and also Caprice. Um, Ustaz, if you may share a little bit on how uh, maybe our faith uh, leaders and teachers could better equip themselves um, if they would like to learn more uh, on mental health, on the human brain, etc. Thank you, uh, Bonita. Mm. Firstly, we have to acknowledge our limitations first. Okay. Yeah? When we have to acknowledge the fact that for the past maybe 100, 200 years, uh, Islamic scholarship Mm -hmm. um, has not given much focus on this area. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we have the feel of the sawuf, we have the feel of the skia to nafs, which speaks much about the human psyche. Yeah. But as I said just now, the brain has been neglected. Yeah. Right? So we have to acknowledge this fact first. If you do not acknowledge that you do not know, you will not be able to learn. Right? We have to acknowledge the muhasabah. Mm -hmm. And as for the resources, Alhamdulillah, as I said just now, is 
there is a revival currently. Okay. I think it started maybe 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the main spark for this, I believe, is uh, Professor Malik Badri, lah, the late Professor Malik Badri. Mm -hmm. And now we have students around the world. We have uh, Dr. Abdullah Rothman, right, in uh, Cambridge, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Cambridge Muslim College, Super. founded by Dr. Abdul Hakim Murad. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, we have Dr. Alizi Alias, who is yes. also a student of uh, Professor Mohi Badri. He's mm -hmm. in Malaysia. Yep. IUM, if I'm yes, not mistaken. Yes, I am correct. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I know uh, Dr. Zul Bakri, uh, yep. Zulkifli Al Bakri, mm -hmm. when he was the Mufti of Wilayah Persekutuan, yep. he invited Miasa. Mm -hmm. That means he showed uh, serious eagerness yes. to uh, interest, to understand this field. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And we have a number of other young Asatizas also yes. who are looking into this field. Mm -hmm. So I would like to invite uh, our Ustaz, our Ustazah, you know, to understand uh, that we are not just the spirit and the soul. Please understand this. Uh, the, the brain has a very important role to play in our uh, behavior, mm -hmm. uh, in our psychology, in our emotional regulation and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And the brain is a whole new world. Yeah. You know, how much do we know about the brain in the society? Mm -hmm. Well, kita tahu the brain is only for thinking. Mm -hmm. And other than that, the regions of the brain, and bahagian-bahagian otak kita yang ada peranan-peranan masing-masing, kaitannya, and what is the relationship between the brain and the soul? Yeah. And what is the difference between the brain and the mind? Mm -hmm. You see, is the mind the brain? Mm -hmm. These are big questions asked by philosophers throughout history right. and people of religion. And we believe that prophets of God throughout human history have dealt with this clearly through the revelation from God yeah. you see so um, and another thing also um, I would like to call upon our Rukia practitioners okay. because their reach is wider oh. Yeah. Oh. you see our Rukia practitioners or Rainbow Rukia or religious counseling mm -hmm. you have to look into this field yeah. belajar psikologi sekali mm -hmm. kan? mm -hmm. belajar uh, kalau boleh ya, ambil uh, degree in psychiatry ke apa ke mm. it will surely improve your performance mm -hmm. kan? your service for the community mm -hmm. because many of them for example ya, uh, when you do Rokya mm -hmm. uh, you see reactions yeah. some of these reactions are coming from the subconscious mm. you see? but some of these reactions are coming from what we believe as the unseen unseen mm -hmm. world or unseen entities uh, mm -hmm. spirits but some do not. Mm -hmm. So if if you can practitioners every time say this is jinn, this is sahir, this is jinn, this is sahir, mm -hmm. no, this will delay people's uh, access to proper treatment, no, treatment yeah. right? But if mm -hmm. you know both, at least I'm not asking that mm -hmm. everyone knows everything, right? Mm -hmm. At least you know the basics of human psychology, and you know the basics about the jinn and the shaitan and the and sahir. Mm -hmm. That will help the community a lot. Yep. And I will even focus on that. They, they mm. should start first, you know. Mm. Tapi Ustaz, maybe that's really interesting. Maybe you can share with our audience as well. You've treated a lot of clients at Mia Ustaz. How do you how do you know this person has a medical condition of a mental health condition versus it is truly sihir, saka, gangguan? You know? Yeah. Yeah. How do you? I wouldn't say that I've treated a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. People mm -hmm. may benefit from my okay. uh, my mm -hmm. sharing sessions and all mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. You see, um, there's this doctor called Dr. Richard Gallagher. Yep. He's a lecturer in uh, Yale University. Mm -hmm. He's a board certified psychiatrist. Okay. He's from the Ivy Leagues of America. Mm -hmm. And he wrote this book, uh, it's recent, okay. entitled Demonic Force. Demonic, Demonic Force. Force. In that book, he clearly stated his position on this matter. Mm -hmm. He said that, I believe, because I've seen, yeah. because I've experienced, and I've met patients with uh, uh, this condition called, you know, uh, possessed by entities. How does he uh, come to that conclusion? Mm -hmm. What is his yardstick? Yeah. And his yardstick is not that different from the yardstick used by many Rukia practitioners. Mm -hmm. Is that? The patient or the client needs to show some supernatural uh, capabilities. Okay. Not just you know pakai pakai beli kena rukia, you know or macam suara garau sikit beli kena rukia. Not just that. It must okay. go beyond that. For example, the person can speak in multiple tongues, and we know that the person have never learned that language. Okay. Tested by the by the family and right. friends, and the person can know things about you that is. Uh, I've been known by you. Mm, right. You see, something happened to you 15 years ago. Right. And they can tell you exactly what you have in your wallet, you know, or what you did and mm -hmm. your personality. 
right. you know, in that state of being possessed. Okay. And these things are real, yeah. but they are not as common as people think. Maybe in 1,000 cases, only one true authentic case. Okay. And lain semua tu banyak uh, kita kata subconscious yang keluar. Yeah, yang keluar. You see, their anger, their sadness right. came out as disassociative uh, yeah. states, right. identity disorder. That yeah. they may think that they are someone else. Uh -huh. They may even say that I'm the jinn that is possessing uh -huh. her or uh -huh. him. Uh -huh. Whereas it is his own uh, psychology, uh -huh. cara dia nak deal, cara nak cope, Yalah. is to create a different personality. Uh -huh. so we have this dissociative yes. problem. It's also right? a condition. Yeah, it's yes. a condition, kan? Uh -huh. So, sometimes when people do rukya, this uh -huh. thing comes out. Betul. But people who do not understand this, they will cepat-cepat kata jin, cepat-cepat yes. kata sihir and all Betul. this. And it's dangerous. Yes. You know, it's dangerous. You misdiagnose someone. Betul. They may live for 10, 15 years, uh -huh. not getting the right treatment. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's such an important point. Thank you, Ustaz, for sharing that. Um, maybe Caprice a little bit um, on your own lived experience, Caprice. Mm. Um, you know, you've been very open about you know your own struggles, mm -hmm. and uh, I think many of us uh, generally know you struggle with anxiety. Mm -hmm. You struggle with depression. You talk a lot about Xanax as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Um, but what do you think when when you're struggling with all these? you know challenges has mm. that affected your you know public life or mm. is it helpful in the sense where you're able to talk about it openly because I, I find that you know mm. on social media you're you're a very vulnerable person mm. you're okay to talk about it mm. you know although mm. there's so much stigma attached sure. to a mental health condition sure. and especially people struggling with the condition so maybe if you can share a little bit on that caprice yeah sure um mm. my life has always been an open book uh, for mm -hmm. better or for worse right um as much as if I like to share like my favorite song I would also like to share when life is not always great because right. people like it well, when you share your favorite song people are like oh that's my favorite song too mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so when I say oh life is tough guys you know and you have to sometimes accept it and deal with the struggles and then people are like oh wow I struggle too right so you sort of have to um, when you're a public figure I feel like there's certain responsibilities where you're allowed to share your struggles as well mm -hmm. And, and share your solutions to the struggles. Right. And going back to what Usa said, the whole Rukia and the spiritual, I actually have that dilemma. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my, uh, when I feel like, you know what, I can't do Rukia anymore. Every time mm -hmm. I see the Usta, it's just, I get stressed. Yeah, I'm gonna hard. go. I'm gonna go to a psychiatrist today. <laughs> so I will call my doctor, hi doctor, <laughs> can I come over? Right. And then I'll be back on the medication. And then when I'm just tired of the medication, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what, I come out, Ustad. I feel like maybe this is just some gin or some gangguan. Yeah. Can you come over? So it's always been that dilemma. Like, it's a paradox. Like, technically, it would be great if an Ustad is equipped with uh, a degree in psychology. Yes. So maybe, like, it, it's a marriage of the two. Yes. Right now, I'm stuck with going to this, uh, this, this one or, or this one. This one, yeah. When, in fact, you can get maybe one day the both and maybe it'd be better diagnosed. Um, mm. But the more that I share about what mm -hmm. I go through, mm -hmm. the more people um, feel like they're not alone. Yeah, I think that's very important. Um, for me, the thing that triggers my anxiety is whenever mm -hmm. I'm alone. Whenever I'm alone or by myself, I overthink or think too much. Yes. Um, and so whenever people hear that even someone like me is going through the struggles mm -hmm. and that I openly go Rukia or even psych psychology, yeah. it makes them at least have that option, you know, I'm not alone. Yeah. If Caprice is going through all this nonsense and he tells it openly that he does Rukia, maybe I should give that a try. Yeah. And not be shy about it. So, um, but for me, it does not affect my life. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I pay my own bills. I don't have like a, you know, right. no one pays my bill for me. So maybe it might not affect me. But sometimes mm -hmm. people with jobs, it might be problematic. Right. If you, you, you if you have a f yeah. a, a full time job, and if you suddenly are exposing your weaknesses on social media, yeah. it might not benefit you in the work workplace. Mm -hmm. But because um, uh, I've always been sort of independent, so in, in that sense, uh, I feel like it's okay for me do, to do and express myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I also think it's also because you, you don't internalize the stigma, you see. Mm. And I also feel that maybe it's also because you know that the stigma exists, mm. but and, and yet you want to overcome that, right? Mm. You want to tell people, look, I may have anxiety and depression, but I can be successful. For sure. Hence, you guys can be successful as well. For and sure. so that triggers other people's minds saying that, okay, 
if Caprice can succeed, then maybe there is a possibility that I can succeed, mm. succeed as well, that I can recover too. Correct. And I think that's, that's such an important conversation to have. Um, and Ustaz, you know, when we're talking about all these, you know, various works that we are all doing, what would you say are some maybe obstacles that you are maybe currently facing or that you faced in this work that you're doing at the moment? Mm, the main challenge is to practice what you preach. Yeah. To paling susah. Yeah. Because if you do not practice what you preach, mm -hmm. they can come out differently. Yeah, I agree. Different strings in people's heart yang can push. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. You see, so that is the main uh, uh, important challenge to me. Mm. And I believe uh, therapists, no matter who you are, mm -hmm. start with yourself. Yeah. Begin with yourself. Mm. Yeah. We forget this. Yeah. Wallahi, we forget this. You know, we have people who speak a lot about this and that, but their own state. I'm talking about, you know, not anyone else but myself, and yeah. we have many things to improve on. Mm -hmm. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kabura mm maqtan -hmm. indallahi an taqulu ma la Great is Allah's anger when you do not do what you say. Yeah. You see, we may think that we are therapy, we are helping someone. Mm -hmm. We are advising, suggesting this mm -hmm. and that. But do you yourself do it? Yeah. This is what I fear the most. And this mm -hmm. is, uh, I hope it will be my main concern till I die. Mm -hmm. Because that is what will ensure your sincerity. It's yeah. very important. Yep. Yeah? And to look at it as work, there's also another challenge. Okay. Right? As Muslims, yeah. we have to look at it as service. Yeah. As, as people of religion, I'm not talking mm -hmm. only about Islam, mm -hmm. uh, Buddhists, Christians, Hindus, we have this idea yeah. that serving humanity mm -hmm. is part of serving God. Yes. And so that is the main challenge. And number two, uh, the patience from clients. Yeah. Right? Because this kind of therapy, like spiritual therapy for example, mm -hmm. it goes to the core of our humanity. Yeah. It does not deal with symptoms. Mm -hmm. It does not deal with behavior. Mm -hmm. It deals first and foremost with your belief system. Mm -hmm. now, in Islamic spiritual therapy, for example, mm -hmm. we infuse much logotherapy. Yep. Logotherapy means meaning, meaning yep. therapy. Mm -hmm. Like I refer much to the work of Dr. Victor Frankl, yep. which is not that different from uh, uh, our books of Tazkiyah, uh, mm -hmm. or Purification of the Soul. Yep. Like meaning is central in our mental health. Yes, it is. Like we have clients who uh, ask questions like, you know, if God is all loving, then why all this suffering, for example? But, uh, this is a question that many people ask. Yeah. But if you do not find the answer to this, mm -hmm. if the answer is not convincing, dia akan makan dalam tau, pelan-pelan, baca anak-anak. You may think that it has no effect. Ah, it's just a belief, you know? Mm -hmm. I have important work to do. But dia makan, dia makan sikit-sikit. Especially when you face problems in life, yeah. and you have no uh, uh, nowhere to resort to, they are can plan plan jadi cancer. Mm -hmm. You see, and this cancer they are can grow to affect your body and also your brain. Mm -hmm. This is what I believe in. You yeah. see, but I also believe in uh, endogenous mental health issues, like mm -hmm. it comes from the body, yeah. uh, not not necessarily coming from the soul mm -hmm. or how you behave or mm -hmm. what it may come from your body. Uh, mm -hmm. Ketidaksimbangan chemical dan sebagainya mm -hmm. These things do happen mm -hmm. So, uh, patients uh, Sometimes are impatient mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. you know, Give me some medication right. You know, start Give me some rukia One, two sessions mm -hmm. I okay mm -hmm. Jin to hilang mm -hmm. Jin to pergi mm -hmm. But They do not want to deal with their behavior yeah. How they speak to their wife, for example mm -hmm. How they deal with their uh, Bosses right. Or their employees mm -hmm. No, I do not want to change all of that mm -hmm. stuff. This is all fine. Right. But we know that it's not fine. Right. But I say, no, no, don't touch on this. Mm -hmm. Just give me something that I can, you know, come mm -hmm. and go. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. Yeah. Because the core of us is our role, our spirit, right? Our psyche. Yeah. And these things need real work. Betul. That's why in Islam we call it a jihad. Betul. Mm -hmm. There's one hadith which is mm -hmm. not 100% authentic, mm -hmm. which is said in Islam and the Nabi. After he came back from a war, mm -hmm. he said that I came back, we came back from a smaller war, smaller jihad, mm -hmm. to a greater jihad. Mm -hmm. And that greater jihad refers to inward jihad. Now, this hadith may not be 100% mm -hmm. authentic, but the meaning mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. Why is it called as the greater jihad? Because we face this struggle every day. Yeah. We, people don't go to war every time, right? But 
this war happens every single second, mm -hmm. every time, every moment is out in our lives. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, this is partly the, the challenge that I face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's also great because uh, one of the recent books that I'm reading, uh, Dr. Gabor, I think you know him. The book. Um, yeah, Gabor, where you know he spoke about how, in his many many years, um, you know, as a physician, that what he has really learned is when he speaks to his patient, it's not just giving that medication but really learning about their lives um, and that is how you're able to tackle each issue one at a time and that takes a lot of time and that takes a lot it's of not time 15, exactly 20 minutes per session. Betul. <laughs> and i also like ustaz like mm. in your classes i think many many years ago and i still hold it really really close um, to my heart because of you know this work that we're doing uh, which is really massive right um, I think it's Surah ar you know, verse 11, right? Mm. And you, you say this a lot and I, I really, really hold on to it because, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never going to change the condition, the situation of, of a person, right? Of a community, of a society, of a nation until we change what is in ourselves. And exactly, you know, Ustaz, you always mention this way. We're not reflecting inward. Mm. It's always about blaming who, who's to be blamed, yeah. you know, mm. who's at fault. Um, I think this discussion um, ultimately is really, really crucial. Thank you, Ustaz, for sharing that. Uh, and I think, um, Caprice, um, yeah. in your struggles with mm. your mental health mm. issues, um, mm. and you know, coming back to this topic uh, where we're talking about, you know, the path to healing, mm. the path to mm. transformation, um, and there are a lot of people. I think, unfortunately, are struggling in silence. Right. Um, whether you know they're going through a mental health condition or they're going through any kind of trauma, abuse, mm. um, um, you know, addiction problems, as an example, mm. how can we better support them, and how can these people that are silent come out? You know, what what would you say? I think the more people that share mm -hmm. what they're going through mm -hmm. will make people be able to relate, as well as not be afraid to share. Yeah. But feel safe in the process as well. Hundred percent. Yeah. But at the same time, there's always that dilemma online mm -hmm. where if you share your weakness, you're you're making yourself vulnerable to all kinds of criticism right. at the workplace, within the mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So we're fighting that wave. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So mm -hmm. it's a it's a very tough wave to fight, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the more that we share, um, the more that's gonna benefit people out there. Even platform like this. Right. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Is required to really help them uh, feel they're not alone, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's normalizing such discussions, right? right. And those of you that um, obviously have such platforms um, to use it and leverage on it, um, so that we can talk about you know more uh, positive yeah. creating that. But, but we're fighting mm -hmm. a culture, right? Uh, yeah. Honestly, it's it's not within the mm -hmm. Malay culture. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. to be sharing these kind of things right. it's unfortunate but mm -hmm. literally every time i talk about it mm -hmm. you're fighting a wave of that malay culture where ah you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's un it's just culture and mm -hmm. culture is something is, is like you're fighting a brick wall mm -hmm. and unfortunately like uh, i think recent studies after covid 19 yeah a lot mm -hmm. of malaysians are struggling with mental illness oh of course and the mm -hmm. numbers are insane yep. but then if you if you ask the same stats how many of these numbers are getting help mm -hmm people will be like really quiet right and it's scary because i mean this kind of thing will lead to not just not say suicide mm -hmm. but people might it could. Or obesity other uh, health other issues because yeah. you know how people deal with stress mm -hmm. different ways some people eat a lot some mm -hmm. people don't eat some people end up doing drugs mm -hmm. alcohol mm -hmm. crime mm -hmm. all this kind of craziness right and if you ever wonder like why there's so much craziness on social media on the news mm -hmm. i believe part of it's got to do with stress Right. Like people don't know how to, they, they, they don't know, they were not equipped of how mm -hmm. to deal with stress mm -hmm. that, that, that they end up doing something stupid. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. I feel like Malaysia has to realize culture is one thing. Right. But to not be open, if you're open to Rukia, mm -hmm. like Malay culture, we're open to Rukia. Rukia. See here. Right. See here, if you, because I do social media, right? Mm -hmm. See here, Santao, Gangwan, Ahir Zaman, mm -hmm. the number one. <laughs> engagement on Facebook. No, really. Right, right. Check out TikTok. Check out Facebook. Right, right, the number right. one engagement on Facebook and TikTok. Mm -hmm. If you uh, see here, Santa uh, stories. Yeah. Ooh, trending, mm -hmm. trending, 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 trending. But if you start talking about anxiety and depression, right? Oh, oof. Not gila. Just, not just trending. Gila, uh, yeah. gila, I'm gila. like, hey guys. Yep. Hold on. If if you sit down <laughs> with the Ustad here, right? 
and if you sit down with me who calls the rukia and calls the doctor mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. i swear it's the same thing <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean it's almost the same thing it's like mm -hmm. it's almost the same thing so i feel like we need to wake when i'm on we need to wake up mm -hmm. and 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 put that culture not say aside but realizing that we all have a brain all of us whether you're yep. muslim non-muslim mm -hmm. and uh anxiety is as common as the common flu right period mm -hmm. and especially at this point of our history with COVID-19, stress, anxiety, depression is real. Yep. So I feel like we really have to be open about this. And I, and I feel like the only way it becomes more open is, is if more Ustas get involved. Because mm -hmm. going, going back to culture, where do all the Malays seek for help when they're depressed? Oh, Ustas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they feel like they're being possessed or life is tough, they mm -hmm. feel like, oh, I need comfort. And I say, hey, mm -hmm. Ustas. Mm -hmm. If they feel like, they will go to Ustas. Right. So I feel like one strategy for Miasa mm -hmm. or anybody or mm -hmm. any entity right. that's trying to uh, attend to this problem, mm -hmm. get more Ustas involved in this conversation yeah. in order to sort of uh, blend in with the culture. You, you can't fight culture. If you're not always fighting culture, you'll just be on that yep. uh, stumbling blocks where you just you hit a roadblock. Yep. But if, if somehow more Ustas get involved in psychiatry and uh, talking about anxiety, depression, it's 100% fine. I mean, and I feel like what Usasi was correct. You might even better diagnose a person. Mm -hmm. You might actually end up giving the person the, the right medication, the right uh, way of thinking to equip them with, with the necessary medication to go on with life, to fight anxiety, to fight depression, or to mm -hmm. fight gin for whatever reason. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I think uh, that's, that's one thing. Yeah, I think it's also because of. Um, accessibility to information when we talk about mental health you know how do you actually reach the rural mm. areas um, as an example right but, but that's the yeah. thing but rural areas have access to, t t to tiktok <laughs> yeah i've seen but people in campo dancing yeah. to tiktok you know what i mean right. so i feel like they have access to nonsense for sure they can have access to ilmu right. but how much of that 30 seconds is on mental health per se mm. or mental health challenges or issues right you can't do much with 30 seconds Whoa. but maybe like ustaz was yeah. saying that 30 seconds bring it bring what, them to the game when later. was the last time you saw <laughs> the ustad do mm -hmm. a 30 second video kurang depressed tak ni tiga cara untuk lawan depressed yeah ustaz kena buat dah which ustaz have you seen in malaysia or singapore have done this no anyone are they kind of depressed because then when you trigger them like mm -hmm. at the social media mm -hmm. you need a triggering headline yeah are they kind of depressed ni lah tiga cara untuk kawakan depression mengatasinya mm -hmm. uh. uh. pernah kena sihir did you know that it might be mental 90% of people actually yeah. have depression mm -hmm. and then it opens up like oh maybe I, I don't have to see here mm -hmm. maybe I just have a mental illness mm -hmm. yeah. but until the day that Ustaz is out there and started doing 30 seconds TikTok mm -hmm. then you then the guy in Kampong who sees a Gaelic video might never end up seeing that <laughs> important see here video right it's just a matter of uh, initiative I never blame the platform mm -hmm. or even demographic. Mm -hmm. Now even Kampong areas have five G. There's no there's no excuse. I used to have this conversation all the time, guys. Mm -hmm. No one have access. Maybe Zaman Arwato. Maybe they have some excuse. Ah not dapa ilmu can be library. Right? Mm -hmm. But there's nowadays every corner of the country have access to Gaelic videos. Mm -hmm. So confirm have access to ilmu. It's just a matter of the one that's providing the ilmu. Are you are you going with the trend and trying to use that platform mm -hmm. for a greater service, mm -hmm. or are you playing a safe role and like you know? Yeah. yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. So maybe with that information, then we have to increase accessibility to care in the kampung kampung areas as well. So mm -hmm. obviously, there's still a lot of you know, still a lot of work to be done. Sure. Uh, but hopefully, through such conversations, uh, we can all do more. And I think the the irony of the whole thing and Ustaz is of course we talk about you know medical breakthroughs you know, technology maju uh, mm. but we are still struggling with more people today are struggling with mental health challenges like it or not yep. many are still using maladaptive coping you know addiction uh, drugs alcohol all these things so more are skyrocketing even suicide you know like you said yep. when your mental health condition is not being treated well it's not coming from that holistic approach the crux of the issue isn't uh, being helped, then of course that possibility of suicide is always there. And of course, that's where you know roles like Ostas, you know, talking about spirituality, religion, bringing the people back to religion. This is really 
that conversation that needs to happen constantly and consistently. Mm. Um, so I think we have come to the end of the show. Thank you so much, Ustaz Muhammad Nodaros, for sharing your insights. And of course, Caprice mm. uh, or Aris Ramli uh, for being with us with the show. I find um, I, of course, as usual, learned a lot um, from you know such sessions. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys found it beneficial and helpful. Um, please continue to Follow us on Facebook and also YouTube on our The Game Changer talk show every Sunday night from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay tuned, stay safe, and take care. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.